I was going to ask about, uh, is it too early in the podcast to bring up Leafs camp? No. Should I be asking something else? No. Uh, Leafs camp, um, again, uh, better luck than management. Um, I did some things with the Mooseheads, and when the Leafs came to town, they uh, they did the courtesy call to uh, Brian Urquhart at the Mooseheads. Okay, yeah, and yeah. I yeah. said, look, we're coming into town. Just want to let you know we're doing this. We might have an exhibition game. We may do this. Uh, so, sorry, the Leafs called Brian? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, at one point in time, the camp was going to be at the Scotiabank Center. And yeah. anyway, they just they just uh, courtesy called to Brian. And at the end of the call, they just said, look, uh, we're going to need some help. Do, do you know anybody local? And I did um, the uh, uh, top prospects game with them in the Canada Russia series. Like I helped out the Moosehead. So, Brian just gave him my name. And, and, and if it wasn't. So Brian texted me and said, I just want to let you know, you're going to get a call from a guy from the Leafs. And if it wasn't for the text from Brian, when uh, Reed called me from the Leafs, I would have said like, yeah, whatever. But uh, I wouldn't have believed him, right? Yeah, you would have hung up. Yeah. But at first, you know, they, they uh, just wanted um, me to kind of hang out at the hotel and give suggestions for restaurants and things of that nature. And it just exploded. Like they brought the circus to town. They brought their NHL team, AHL team, East Coast team, uh, PTOs. Uh, they brought uh, 150 marketing and sales people. Uh, they brought obviously all the training staff. So they brought they brought an army, and so my role went from uh, just helping out to um, uh, organized all security, transportation, meals, on ice officials, timekeepers, um, et cetera, et cetera. I helped the marketing team out with a bunch of things. Um, so it was it was really cool. Wow. So your job just started as a guy looking to help out and give suggestions, and then what did it turn into? Well, so Reed would call me. So Reed Mitchell, director of player development for the Leafs, he's still there now. Great guy. Uh, he just he'd call and say, "Oh, we need this. No, we need that." But what would this or that be? Like a shit, like a uh, like you got to run up to Cleves and grab a shin pad for Matthews. Like what are you doing? <laughs> no, it's 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 more so. So they came down for a site visit, and uh, they walked through. So at this point in time, um, they were between a couple different ranks, but we ended up going with. And I say we it wasn't my decision. Ended up going with the BMO Center. Yeah. So then we had to find. Um, uh, there's there's no. Um, Workout facility there. So we had to find a CrossFit gym. And then we had to rent bikes for the, like, it'd be nothing. I, I, I'm, I'm struggling to think of examples, but like the exercise bikes, for instance, like it'd be nothing for me to put $6,000 on my credit card to hold something for the Leafs and then them pay, pay me back. back. Yeah. And the unfortunate thing is they always gave me cash. I wanted to get a check so bad. Yeah, with the logo. <laughs> with the logo. logo right? yeah, I don't yeah. care if it's two cents. That's all I wanted. And they kept on just peeling out the hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> that's then amazing I'm going to the bank look like a drug dealer that's amazing yeah um did you ever get like in the dressing room at all like during the camp and just like helping the boys out with anything like that the coolest story is um so the first yeah, mark do you want to sorry the cool story is the first night uh they do their their uh physicals and their uh their media in toronto yeah and they jump on a plane yeah and they come to halifax uh, so we, uh, we had teams split up and we busted all their gear to the BMO center to set them up. Um, but they have this big dinner and introduction. So at this point in time, this is 2015, everybody's brand new. Shanahan might've started in February the year before, yeah. but Lou Lamorell is new. Babcock's new. The entire coaching staff is new. Their media guys new. Their strength and conditioning is new. Their team doctors new. The whole new house. So um, that was the first year Matthews was there too. I'm pretty sure. No, no? He, was, he was 16. Okay. But you were there at 16 as well, weren't you? Yes, I was. Okay. Well, yeah. Um, so we go and, and we're at the, uh, the Marriott Harbor front, I have this great big buffet, great meal. And then they have like, it's set up as theater seating to sit like 300. And so it starts off and I don't know if I'm going to get in trouble for this story or not, but whatever. whatever. Um, so Shanahan gets up and Shanahan, you know, podium, you know, official, we're kicking off camp and Shanahan's like, you know, this BS has to stop. He didn't say BS. This BS has to stop. You know, there's no more excuses. We're moving forward. We got you the best team doctor. We got you the best GM. We got you the best everything. You're going to perform. No more excuses. I promised Lou I wasn't going to swear, but effing, 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 <laughs> straighten up and fly right. So that was pretty neat. Wow. And then Lou gets up there. And Lou is, the entire organization is scared to death of Lou Lamorello. Okay. Everybody's scared. Like when they did their site visit, there was still um, an image of uh, Phil Kessel on BMO Center. And they're like, holy shit, you got to get that down before Lou sees it. Because he was traded at that point in time. Oh, right? Really? And anyway, so Lou's a, Lou's a detail guy. Um, and Lou gets up there and he talks about making the proper choices and social media is evil. and Get off he, Tinder, Bumble. Yeah, yeah, stay in the moment. You know, you can ruin yourself with one tweet and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then Babcock gets up there and Babcock's like, all right, guys, you know, we're here. There's no excuses. We're going to do this. We're going to, you know, best power play this and goes on. And then they called me up. What? 
Well, because I'm like... No offense, but why? Well, that's... Okay, guys, so um, if you want your deep sea charter fishing, come see me, sign up. Uh, If you want to go golfing, (laughs) come see me, sign up. Uh, You need a vehicle, you know, we're going to be at the front door. We can take you anywhere, 24 hours, no, 24-hour access. Come see me, so... Wait, did you get up on the stage that they were all on? yeah, yeah. So they're going to like make the right choices, do the right things. Okay, now here's Ken. He's going to make sure you guys have some fun. <laughs> well, in 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 the the real part of the story is, you know, when Shanahan took over, he wanted to change the culture. He wanted to change everything, and he said training camp cannot be in fun. Toronto. Yeah, I get that. So you know, other teams go to Europe. Things like they they had a bunch of different cities on. Yeah, they on, went to Newfoundland last year, two years ago. Yeah, and yeah, they yeah. Uh, Niagara Falls, and they were supposed to go to PEI this summer. Or sorry, not not the season we're in right now, but the last season when covid kind of oh yeah in would you have been there if uh potentially yeah. there was conversations but um uh anyway I, I lost my train of thought oh yeah so shanahan wanted to change culture and then and then babcock is a big like obviously guys aren't out drinking but he wants guys out you know golfing getting together deep sea fishing uh enjoying a nice restaurant um, just taking in what the city has to offer and not just be stuck in their hotel room. So they really wanted a functional training camp. So I booked all kinds of uh, uh, golf times at uh, Glen Arbor and Brunello and, and booked a bunch of uh, deep sea charter uh, fishing tours, which awesome. they all got gobbled up. Um, so yeah, that was, that was pretty neat. Um, and then the second year in 2016, when they came, it was the World Cup. So they had eight players not there. Babcock wasn't there. Andrew Brewer, their video coach, wasn't there. Uh, Brian Papano, their equipment manager, wasn't there. So it was a much different feel. So I booked all the same charters and deep sea fishing. Yeah. And they're like, you know, junior guys and PTO guys. Yeah. And they're like, okay, well, yeah. it, you know, it's going to cost you two hundred dollars by the time you rent your clubs and your cart. And so they, they, the NHLPA, they're not allowed to f- pay for this. They, the players have to pay on their own. Oh, do so they? So they, the NHLPA, they, they pay for their. They provide a breakfast, they provide a lunch, and then they give them a per diem to eat out in the evening. Mm. So, you know, I was, I remember, I don't even know who the kids are, like some <laughs> kid in the OHL, whatever. And he's like, yeah, I want to golf, I want to golf. And so I sign him up and I said, you know, just be prepared to pay when you get there. It's going to be, oh, oh, I'm not going to do that. Like, they yeah, went, I'm not signed. They went, they went to movies. Like yeah. we would drive them to yeah. Park Lane to go to movies, which, yeah. which is great. But yeah, year one and year two were totally, totally different vibe. Yeah. That's crazy seeing the behind the scenes aspect of it all. Yeah. Just seeing a guy who signed who's a millionaire and then a guy who's in the OHL who's just trying to get signed. It's like, yeah, I'm going to go to Subway for lunch. I'm going to go to the bicycle thief. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just seeing that different. Well, so so Leo Kar- Komarov, a uh, great guy. Yeah. So he wasn't there in 16 because he's at the World Cup. The visor, right? Yeah. Leo, yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, season pro, lots of contracts. Um, the boat charters I rented to go fishing, like 2300 bucks for 12 guys. And- Anyway, he missed out. Like, there's only so many boats. He mm. missed out. He's like, get me another boat. Get me another boat. Well, I said, well, it's $2,300. And I meant, like, you know, you round up a posse and we'll get yeah. you a boat. And he's like, yeah, I'll spend $2,300 to go fishing for you afternoon. I'm like, not per guy, per boat. Ugh. Like, you know, some of the money was. It's just nothing. 2300 bucks is a suit for these guys. Not yeah. even. Yeah. But anyway, they're all they're all really nice and really polite. And, you know, it was. 